Hello children I am Neetu Sharma and I teach English in Government High School Kamalpur District Sangroor Children in the last lecture we have already done the recitation of the poem open thine eyes and see thy god just to recapitulate let's have a few questions to find out what you have understood my first question is name the poet of the poem rabindranath tagore good Who is the speaker in the poem? Yes, the poet himself. Children, I have told you that he had won the Nobel Prize for his book in 1913. Now let me know how many of you remember the name of the book very good it is gitanjali very good children now let's start with the first stanza this chanting and singing and telling of beads whom those to worship in this lonely dark corner of a temple with doors all shut open thine eyes and see thy god is not before thee in the stanza the poet makes a request to all his readers he asks them to stop all rituals like chanting the name of god singing devotional hymns in god's honor and to stop counting the beads of rosary next the poet goes on to describe the temples he says that temples only house of a stone or metal deity in one enlightened corner of the temple and they keep their doors shut most of the time god cannot live in such a lifeless house as that hence the worship of the idol in a temple is not enough to the worship of god that's why he asks the readers to 
open their eyes and not keep them closed any longer as they do while praying as his presence is not a physical one that can be seen in a temple children on the basis of above stanza let's try to find out the answers of the following questions what does the poet say to leave the poet says to leave chanting singing and telling of beads how many archaic words are there in above stanza there are four archaic words like dost do dai and di state true or false in given statements the first statement is god lives in temples is it true or false it is false because god lives in hard work of a tiller and a path maker second statement is by chanting singing and telling of beads we can reach god is it true or false yes again it is false because we can reach god only to our hard work now let's have a look upon the second stanza he is there where the tiller is tilling the hard ground and where the path maker is breaking stones he is with them in sun and in shower and his garment is covered with dust put off thy holy mantle and even like him come down on the dusty soil according to the poet one cannot find god in the temple but with the workers who are working whole day in the dirt and under the hot sun god does not listen to the ascetic prayers because he is with the poor and the downtrodden if the priest wants god he must come out of his temple give up his holy robes and work with humble tillers he thus glorifies the life of the humble laborer in this poem tagore wants the religious minded to go beyond the four walls of their shrines to their where god really exist 
with the farm workers and the construction laborer children on the basis of second stanza let's try to find out the answers of the following questions where can god be found god can be found in hard work of a tiller or the path maker this is very much clear from the first line of the second stanza where the poet says that he is there where the tiller is tilling the hard ground and where the path maker is breaking stones here he refers to god state true or false in given statements our first statement is god is there where the tiller is tilling the ground is it true or false from the very beginning in fact from the first stanza tagore again and again saying the same thing that god can only be found in hard work it cannot be found either in singing chanting or rotating the beads of rosary hence the answer of this statement is true because god can be found in hard worker second statement is we should not work hard is it true or false yes this is false because we should do work hard only then we can achieve the happiness or the blessings of god children let's have a look upon the third stanza of the poem deliverance where is this deliverance to be found our master himself has joyfully taken upon him the bonds of creation he is bound with us all forever in this stanza the poet addresses the superstitious beliefs of his readers he knows that they believe that god will save them from being eternally damned they believe that god has made a place for them in his own abode that is in heaven however the poet does not think that salvation is to be found in heaven if that were so god would not have left heaven in order to come to earth and make a home for mankind over here because he has created all of the mankind he also has an eternal connection with them all hence if we want to find god we must search for him here in this life and not in the after life on the basis of third stanza 
let's try to answer the following question what does the poet mean by deliverance according to the poet mere worship won't bring about deliverance he is among those who work hard for the living toiling under the extreme weathers and doing their utmost to work this working hard and doing our best is the way for deliverance now let's come to the last stanza of the poem that is the fourth one come out of thy meditations and leaves aside thy flaws and incense what harm is there if thy clothes become tattered and stained meet him and stand by him in toil and sweat of thy bro in this stanza the poet returns to make requests to his readers as he had done in the first stanza here he tells his readers to stop their meditations he tells them to throw away the flowers and the incense with which they believe that they will be able to please god the poet anticipates what reaction he will get from his readers after making these requests they will object that if they are to find god in the heat and dust of the everyday world then their clothing will become stained and impure however the poet assured them that god will not care if their garments are torn or dirty that is why the poet ends his poem by telling his readers to come face to face with god and join their labor to his the poet believes that if they work and sweat god will never leave their side on the basis of this stanza let's try to find out the answer of the following questions choose the correct option question is how should we seek deliverance first option is by incessant prayers second option is by going to the temple regularly third by being poised and righteous minded fourth by helping our fellow beings who are in need 
and the right option is the fourth one by helping our fellow beings who are in need let's come to the second statement what should we do to meet god first option is meditate second have true faith in god third offer flowers and incense and the last option is stand by god in toil and in sweat right answer is fourth one stand by god in toil and in sweat before we sum up let's take a relook at the point in the beginning the poet advises the priests to give up their old traditional beliefs like chanting singing and counting of beads he urges them to stop worshiping of god in lonely dark corner of the temple he again and again says open thine eyes and see thy god god can only be found in hard work of a farmer and a path maker he prefers to live with those who works in sun and in shine and whose clothes are soiled with dust the goal of every disciple is to seek deliverance that is the liberation of the soul from the cycle of birth and death but god himself is bound to all of us in chains of love he has joyfully bound himself to the work of creation tagore conveys that participation in the activity of life is essential for the realization of god it is only work that brings salvation and ambiguity about religious experience is central to many of tagore's devotional poems and makes them appeal to readers irrespective of their beliefs this poem is tagore's way of protesting against organized religion tagore asks his reader to relinquish narrow faiths thus tagore conveys that participation in the activity of life is essential for the realization of god in this point the poet does not follow any rhyme scheme the poet uses the device of the apostrophe as he 
addresses his questions and his advices to all idol worshippers whom we never see responding Dear children the homework for today is write down the central idea and summary of the poem My dear students that's all for this session hope you have enjoyed the poem thank you